This is Math 151. We are going to do the rest of Section 3 right now. And really we're going to focus on kind of two relationships, product and quotients within derivatives. So let's start with that product rule. I'm just going to tell it to you. So I have some function. And it can be expressed as two other functions multiplied together. So if I want to find the derivative of that function, this is how I do it. I take the derivative of the first one, multiplied by the second one, and I add the derivative of the second one, multiplied by the first one. This is what this looks like in, Le in Leibniz notation. So the derivative of these two functions multiplied together, derivative of the first one, times derivative of the second one. It says the same thing, it just says it with different notation. Derivative of the second one times the first one. There is a very clever proof uh, in your in your textbook if you want to see the proof of this, what why it happens. Um, if you're if you're happy with just memorizing it, great. But it does derive right out of that <clears throat> limit as h approaches zero definition. It's, uh, it's quite clever. If you spend a little time with it, um, I think you'd appreciate it. So I'm going to have some function j of x, and it is uh, 3x squared multiplied by 5x cubed minus 7x. Now, notice what I have is two things multiplied together. I'm, I'm viewing this as my f of x, and I'm viewing this as my g of x right? Like something multiplied by something else. I could think of those as two different functions. If I wanted, I could distribute that 3x squared into there, and then I could just find the derivative of that. That, that would probably be an easier way to do this derivative, but I want to illustrate uh, how to use this relationship. I don't know if that's the same color or not, but I'm going to go with it. The derivative of this Notice what it would be. It would be derivative of the first one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it out so you can see what, what I'm doing here. Derivative of the first one multiplied just by the second one untouched plus derivative of the second one multiplied by just the first one untouched. So notice I actually didn't find the derivatives. I just rewrote it like this. And, you know, your first couple times you do this, if, if you rewriting it like this helps you do it, um, doing it all in your head can be can be a little bit tricky. But let's go ahead and do this. So derivative of 3x squared, well, I know that it's uh, 3, and remember that, that power relationship, 2x to the first. So it's a 6x, and that's still multiplied by that 5x cubed minus 7x, plus, oh, i got to take derivative of this one. So 15x squared minus, that's x to the first, so 7. And that's multiplied by 3x squared. Again, notice derivative of the first times the second one plus derivative of the second one. Derivative of the second one times the first one. And now I can simplify this. So distribute that 6 into there. Uh, 30x to the fourth. And then I'm going to distribute that 3x squared into there. Bind up some like terms. So the derivative of this is that. And notice we got it using that, that product relationship. Since this is equivalent to that, just to show that it, that it works, let's see, bring that down. 5 times 15 is 75x to the fourth. I'm taking the derivative of each piece. Um, 3 times 21 is 63x squared. Like, if you can multiply it out, um, and do it that way. This is this is much more efficient. But sometimes you sometimes uh, you can't. Or in this case, it's more efficient. It's not. It's not always. So let's get a, a quotient relationship. If I have some function that's built up out of two other functions with division, right? The quotient is division. So f of x divided by g of x. Derivative of that is. And it starts out, uh, it, it feels a lot like the multiplication one, at least at first. Derivative of the first one times the second one. But then it's minus 
uh, not the second one, but the bottom one, the denominator, then it's minus derivative of the denominator times the numerator. And that's all over the denominator squared. Now, there's some very, very good reasons why <laughs> there's this minus a negative and this is squared, and we'll get at it in this lecture. Um, you, you'll, you'll see why when we when we'll push it a little bit further. If I write this in Leibniz notation, the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivator, derivative of the denominator times the numerator, and again over that denominator squared. So let's do an example like that. So find the derivative of 3x squared over 5x plus 4. So notice it's a quotient. So let me, uh, let me go ahead and do this. Now, you don't need to necessarily write out the step, but sometimes, like I said before, when you're first learning something, it's not a bad idea to try and not keep everything in your head. So derivative of the numerator times the denominator. Derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator. That's an x in there. Squared. So I haven't actually done any uh, derivatives yet. I've just, I've just rewritten it, right, like in this form. So now let me do these derivatives. So derivative of 3x squared, I know that that is, you know, the 2 comes down. So 6x to the first power minus the derivative of 5x plus 4. Well, the derivative of the constant is just 0. 5x is 5, and that's times 3x squared. And that's all over uh, 5x plus 4 squared. So let me keep going from here, combine up some like terms. 30x squared plus 24x, and this is a negative 5, so minus 15x squared, all over uh, 5x plus 4 squared. And you can leave this... Um, as 5x plus 4 squared, you don't have to multiply it out. But I do have, I could combine some terms here, 30x squared minus 15x squared. There it is, there's our derivative. This is the derivative of that. So I'd like to do another example of, of the quotient uh, relationship. Part of this skill is seeing the individual functions, right? Like seeing that this is, um, this 4x plus 3 is my, is my f of x, and this 3x minus 7 is my g of x, or whatever I want to call them, right? Like function from the top, function from the bottom. Being able to see these functions, uh, see this as a composite of two different functions is, uh, is huge. So we want to find, we really do, we want to find the derivative of that. I love that phrase. We want to find them. So I know, and I, I'm not going to rewrite this in Leibniz notation. I'm just going to say like, if this is my f and this is my g, I know that it's going to be the function of the top times the bottom minus uh, the function, the, the um, derivative. Derivative of the bottom times the top over the bottom squared. Again, that's my f, that's my g. So derivative of f, 4x plus 3 is 4, and that's multiplied by my g, my bottom. Derivative of this is just 3. f of x is 4x all over. And then I just have a little bit of arithmetic to do, or algebra, I guess, simplification. Uh, 12x minus 24. This is a negative 3 I'm distributing into here. So negative 12x minus 9 over that. 12x minus 12x is 0, negative 24 minus 9, negative 37. There she blows. So I said I'm, I'd bring a little bit of clarity to this negative in the squaring right here. I want to bring back that power rule. Remember that power rule said if I take the derivative of uh, x to some power, 
of a, right? I'm taking the derivative of this. What's the change of this in relation to the change in x? We know that it's, sometimes we use an n instead of a k, sometimes we use a k. So um, this also applies to negative numbers, uh, to negative exponents. So for example, if I wanted to find the derivative of x to the negative fifth, it would be negative five times x, and then it's negative five minus one to the negative six. And I think, uh, as you know, negative exponents like flip the fraction, right? It means divide by that instead of multiply by it. So this is equivalent to negative five over x to the sixth. So if I had something like f of x is one over, or 10 over x squared, in this case, since I don't have an x up here at all, like I don't have a, a variable up here at all, I could run it through the quotient, but derivative of 10 is gonna be zero. That thing's gonna drop out. So um, it doesn't really, I don't have to do it that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this as 10 times x to the negative second power. So when I go to find the derivative of that, oops, sorry, the derivative of that, negative 20 times x to the k minus one, negative two minus one is negative three. So it would be negative 20 over x to the third. Now, here's, uh, here's what I'm getting at. Notice that when we take the derivative of this x squared down here, it ends up being negative. That's why this is subtraction in this formula right here. It takes care of it. You don't have to keep track of that this was to a negative power. This, this is like, you know, something to a negative power. It takes care of it here. You can just grab it. And notice that down here, g to the x to g x squared, this is increasing, right? Because we're, we're our, our change, our rate change is going on down here. So hopefully, I mean, that doesn't really justify it but it's a little bit of hand-waving um, as to why this is negative in the squares. So I have this function, L of x, and I've defined it as 3 times h of x plus x squared times g of x. Now, I don't know anything about h of x. I don't know anything about g of x, but I know that there are just functions somewhere out there. But even knowing that, I still want to take the derivative of L of x. I want to figure out what it would be. So I have a couple of pieces here. I have, these two things are added together. So remember, I can take the derivative of each of these separately and then add them together to get that. I can take the derivative of this and add the derivative of this. All right, that's how we usually do polynomials. The derivative of three times h that's a constant. So it's the same as three times the derivative of h. Now I can't, I can't resolve this because I don't know what h is. So here's how I'm gonna write this. Three times h prime. <laughs> like once I know h, I can take the derivative of it, but I know this is gonna be three times h prime. Plus, and now notice what I have here, x squared times gx. These two are two functions multiplied together. One of the functions is x squared. One of the functions is g, g of x. So this is a product relationship, blah times blah. So this is going to be derivative of the first one times the second one plus derivative of the second one times the first one. I'm going to write this as 3 times the derivative of h plus uh, 2x times g of x plus, in this order, I, I like to write this out front so it doesn't look like it's an input into that, x squared times the derivative of g. And that's as far as I can go. Now, if I knew h and g, I could, you know, take this derivative here, plug g in here, take this derivative here, and, and resolve it to something that's uh, more straightforward. But hopefully that shows how we can combine things like our additive properties and our product rule. Right? We have to identify the pieces in order to, uh, to combine them. Do another one kind of like that. So here's my function. h of x is uh, 2x cubed k of x uh, over 
3x plus 2. So notice I have another unresolved function in here, k of x. So when I take its derivative, I'm just going to call it k prime of x. And I don't have to do much work for it other than just label it as a derivative. So as I look at this, I see some pieces. I see 2x cubed times kx. So right here, these are two things multiplied together. But I also have a quotient. This whole thing is divided by that whole thing. So if I, if I kind of look at this, I have quotient going on, and then I have a product going on inside that quotient. So I'm going to look to find the derivative of this. And first thing I'm going to do is take care of that quotient. So remember, the quotient is derivative, derivative <laughs> of the numerator. So I'm going to have to take derivative of that whole thing times the denominator minus derivative of the denominator multiplied by the numerator unscathed all over the denominator squared. I, you know, I can start wherever I want, but I might as well start taking the derivative of this. I'm kind of turning the rest of the problem off in my mind, and I'm really focusing just on this right now. So I can tell that it's the derivative of a product. Derivative of the first one 6x squared, right? That comes down, multiplies by the 2, reduces by 1. Uh, so derivative of the first one times the second one plus, and, and look up, <laughs> I didn't mean to cross that up, and look up here for what I'm doing. Derivative, this is my f, and this is my g. Derivative of the first one times the second one plus derivative of the second one times the first one. That is that derivative. And that's still multiplied by 3x plus 2 minus, and now I'm going to do this derivative. And fortunately, that one's pretty straightforward. Just 3, right? x to the first power, 1 comes down, becomes a 0. x to the 0 is 1. Derivative of a constant is 0. So 3 times 2x cubed times kx. Again, that's all over 3x plus 2 squared. And now I am just like pushing symbols. So let me try and clean this up as best as I can. So I have this binomial multiplied by this binomial. So I'm going to distribute everything to everything. So 6x squared kx times 3x. 18x to the third kx. Now I'm going to multiply it by the 2. So that is 12x squared kx. Plus, now this part is going to get multiplied by the those. So uh, 2x cubed times 3x is 6x to the fourth. And that's multiplied by derivative of k. And then this now is going to get multiplied by that 2. So plus 4, and then I'm going to distribute this negative 3 to that. And if this is all one term, so this is just minus 6x cubed k of x. Who we? And let me look if there's anything I can combine up in here. I mean, it's still, it's still over the 3x plus 2 squared. And it looks like I have a x cubed x cubed k and x cubed k here so 18 of them minus 6 of them is 12 nothing else has like terms so plus 12 x squared k of x plus 6 x to the fourth derivative of kx plus 4 derivative of kx all over 3x plus 2 squared. What a colossal, wonderful mess we have there. So the homework is not going to necessarily be as abstract as this. This will These will usually be things that you can actually like uh, find the derivative of. But I, I think this actually, these types of problems are actually a little less work. I want to find the derivative of 3 times f of x minus 2 times g of x. 
So notice I don't I don't have to worry about product here. That's just a constant, so 3 times f of x. I don't have to worry about quotient. There's no division. There's just subtraction here. So you might not write this step out, but this could be just the derivative of the pieces. And so the derivative of 3 times f of x is 3 times the derivative of x. The derivative, the derivative of 2 times g of x is 2 times the derivative of g of x. We're done. So here's a question. Where does f of x, this function, have a horizontal tangent? <laughs> tangent. Uh, horizontal tangent, horizontal like the horizon, flat uh, or flat. So we know that the slope of that is zero. In other words, when is the derivative of this equal to zero? It's the same question as that. For what x values? Well, let's find that derivative. And this is just a polynomial, so we can just take derivative of the pieces. So x cubed, 3x squared, negative 7x squared, boom, negative 14x to the first. We don't need to write the first part. Boom, plus 8, x to the 0 is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So we have that. So when is that equal to 0? You know, when it has a horizontal tangent, it's changing direction. So it's either a, a minimum or it's a, or it's a maximum on the graph. Those are the times where we'll have a horizontal tangent. So let me see. I could factor this. I could run it through quadratic formula. But I can see minus 2 is negative 14. Yep. Yeah. That equals 0. So what makes this 0? 4. What makes this 0? Add 2 divide by 3, 2 thirds. So those are the x values for when this has a horizontal tangent. Notice I know something about that graph. I know where its max and mins fall. I don't know if they're max or mins yet. I could figure it out, but I know where they are at, what the x values are for them. So I have a, uh, a good old position function again. S of t is the position at time t. And the question is, what is the initial velocity? In other words, when t equals 0, what is the velocity at time 0? So to find the velocity, remember I'm going to have to find the first derivative of the position. Let's do that. So looking at this, I have a quotient. Uh, t divided by something in terms of t. So I'm going to use this quotient formula right here. And so I know that it is derivative of the top, uh, the derivative of t, t is t to the first power, so bring it down, 1 times t to the 0, it's 1. So 1 times just the denominator, right, that's my, that's my g of x, minus the derivative of the denominator, so 2t is uh, the derivative of t squared, multiplied by the numerator, all over this denominator squared. And I could clean this up a little bit. Uh, t squared plus 1 minus 2t squared. I'm just grabbing the numerator there. Is uh, negative t squared plus 1 over. That's my velocity at times t. And what I want to know is the initial velocity when it started, when the time is 0. So evaluate this for 0. So I plug a 0 into here. Uh, negative 0 squared plus 1 <laughs> over 0 squared plus 1 squared is uh, 1 over 1. Is 1. So it would be 1 uh, distance unit per time unit. Those weren't defined. So we don't know if it's miles per hour, feet per second, furlongs per month. We just don't know. All right. You've got product rule. You've got quotient rule. From the last lecture, you have uh, some other relationships as well. This right here is our bread and butter for Calc 1. Like, this is the stuff to get really good at. Um, take your time with the practice. Take your time breaking down the functions into their pieces and ask a lot of questions. Um, if, if, this is, if this is rusty for you, the rest of the course is going to be pretty difficult. So I don't expect you to like have it all down right now. 
but put the time in. It's worth the work. It's going to make the rest of the course, um, dare I say, enjoyable. Again, send me any questions you have. Post them in the forums. Take a look at those practice exercises as well.